There was quite a lot of football on TV last night. Yeah, yeah. You, so you, I watched Liverpool play two preseason games. Now they were when I say it was two games, like they were half an hour long. So they started at five, started the second game a quarter to six, and then I uh, watched the, the Celtic game. So I actually thought Celtic were were really good last night, and um, I know one of the headlines said it wasn't a great result, but take out the, the away goals rule is gone now. And well, I was going to say, it's like stereotypically it's a really bad result to draw yeah. one all at home, but now it doesn't matter at all. No, and look, both teams finished with 10 men. Beaton's sending off was so stupid. He was on a yellow and he got sent off for the second yellow towards the end of the first half when uh, the, the guy Dreyer, who actually ended up getting sent off in the second half, went diving in the, the penalty area. So the first thing I thought was Beaton was going to get sent off for bringing him down because it was just, it looked like he was trying to it was a good hunt, dive. hunt him down. And I thought he was going to have a nibble at him. He didn't. He did the hard part. He avoided that. Dryer goes down and then Beaton decides, do you know what? You're a diver. And he, po he poked him in the head with his finger. He right. pointed at him to basically say, don't do that. Poked him. Uh, Dreyer made a bit of a meal of it, but you can't touch anyone's face. Second yellow, and Celtic were up against it. But then, when Dreyer gets sent off in the second half for another yellow for simulation, you think, right, Celtic are, are back in, like they're back in the, the driving seat, because they were really good. First 15 minutes, they were a bit slow, but I thought then they really stepped it up and played with high energy, played with a purpose going forward, and uh, the crowd really got into it. There's only 9,000 there, but honestly, it sounded like there was 30,000 at the game. And then they concede a really poor goal. Barkas, the keeper, at fault, and just changes the, the the thinking going into next week. But as I said, it's not as bad as the it would have been last season with the away goal. And Ange Postecoglou said after the game, the Celtic manager, that they'd only one training session. This squad only had one training session together. Now they obviously played a, pr a few preseason games, but the team that started last night. So I think he was pretty happy with it. Um, I said, the fact that you have to play with 10 men, which effectively, I know it is a Champions League qualifier, but they're still in pre-season. The last thing you want to be doing is playing a game with 10 men and a man down where you got to cover that little bit of extra ground because one of your teammates decides that um, they're going to poke someone on the head. What, what was the style of play? I mean, obviously, I'm not drawing any conclusions or asking you to draw any conclusions. What do we think an Ange Postacoglu team is going to play like uh, how did they line up? What, is there anything that were kind of, as an introduction? Okay, there was a few things, obviously. So they played with a lot of energy and they played with more purpose and looking forward rather than sideways passing. Now, I think we're going to see a lot more of that this season because, you know, we have to think of last season when there was no fans there and, you know, there's no energy in the stadium and, you know, the tempo can drop. And, you know, when you play in front of a crowd that... As soon, if there is a little bit of drop off in tempo, the crowd get on your back. Basically, say you know, pick it up here. And I, I felt once the Celtic crowd got into the game last night, then you could just see Celtic were playing um, definitely more on the front foot. Another thing that was noticeable was Greg Taylor, the left back, was doing uh, Philip Lamb. He was dropping into midfield. Right. And um, you know, it, it was something that uh, obviously it was it was pre planned. Um, uh, Mitchell and were trying to press and this is a way of trying to get an extra man into midfield at times so that that was just uh, one thing that w was noticeable early enough in the game but um, yeah still very early days but um, obviously Abada got the, the goal on his, his debut um, I thought Sorrow in midfield was, was very good for Celtic McGregor is obviously the new captain he had a he had a good game, so the the goalkeeper is still a bit of an issue. Um, Barkas obviously had a chance last night to show that he deserves to be number one, but he was really poor for the goal. But um, yeah, I don't really know what the expectations are for Celtic fans this season because, let's be honest, Postecoglou was was um, a, a, an appointment nobody saw coming. Eighth or ninth choice, maybe. Yeah, um, everyone thought Eddie Howe was the was the shoe in. Yeah, and um, Postecoglou got it. He's obviously got experience at international level. Anyone that's worked with him speaks highly of him. So is it a case of just give the guy a chance? And there was, I said, plenty to be encouraged by last night. But the problem is if they go out and lose in Denmark next week, then it kind of 
undoes all, all the good work. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure Vim Janssen wasn't the first choice when he got the gig, and that worked out okay. So there's, like, there's definitely a history at Celtic of the, uh, them accidentally finding the right man for the role at various stages in the past, and it has worked for them. Uh, what's the mood music like amongst the Celtic fans? I know you're saying they don't really know or, or what their expectations should be. Obviously because they won nine of the last ten titles, yeah. uh, expectations are going to be pretty high, but suddenly Rangers are a realistic title contender, having just won the league, and uh, are the defending champions. So do they just want to be in a title race that lasts the whole season? Will that be considered progress? Or because the standards are so high, unless you actually win the title, it's a failure? I think it's a failure if you don't win the title. I think Celtic would have felt at the start of last season they should have won the league. They had the, the, the squad to do it, but they just didn't perform. And there was, so there's, there was a lot of anger, and obviously the, the season to, to fall off your, your nine in a row, you're going for that historic 10 in a row. And it was, you couldn't have picked a worse season to, to have such a bad campaign. So now they'll be expecting to, to bounce back and thinking that they have to win the, the league. And you know they still have re some really good players. So um, I, I think we could have a really good title race this season. And um, I think having the crowd back, obviously we know Celtic Park uh, be, is a bit of a fortress. Well, it has been in the past and uh, it's about trying to get that back. And um, it, it comes down to those those old firms, those um, those games against Rangers usually decide who wins the league. now. Celtic were dropping points in other games as well last season, so um, I, I think obviously if they start well, then it means that the crowds kind of are, are on board with Postecoglou and and some of the new signings. So, um, but because of the the fact that it is really just Celtic and Rangers, if you don't win the league, it's failure. Is the squad as good as it was? And and also, I mean, basically since his first five or six months, every transfer window since, people have assumed Edward was leaving, and certainly. This time last year, I'm pretty sure the speculation was very intense about him uh, joining a Premier League club. It hasn't happened just yet. Do you expect him to still be there? Well, he started last night. So, I mean, that, that would be encouraging when um, you think of the... the obviously, Ayer, is, uh, he's gone. He's gone to Brentford. Uh, Olivier and Cham was left out. So the fact that he included him would be a positive. But um, unfortunately, he has been linked with Leicester. He's obviously... He knows Brendan Rodgers. It's very hard to turn that down if if Leicester come. And also, if the price is right, it's it's hard for Celtic to, to turn that kind of money down. OK, so you wouldn't be terribly surprised if uh, if he was gone. And you mentioned uh, Ayer joined Brentford yesterday for £13.5 Is that where Celtic are at the moment? There was a period of time under Brendan Rodgers when they were investing, and they were investing more than they had at any period, uh, essentially since the start of the Martin O'Neill time. That cycle seems to have gone backwards. They're now a club who are looking to buy cheap and sell on. Um, it's a European model, in fairness. Yeah, so. I, I think unfortunately, like that, there's been such a turnover now in in terms of staff in the last few months, and like with managers, CEOs, and it's hard to know what the the plan is going to be. But unfortunately, for so many clubs now, because of the pandemic and you're, you're losing all those gate receipts now. Clubs are so much more vulnerable that if people throw money at you and say we want to take your your best players, it's very hard to turn it down. So, um, but um, I would imagine Postecoglou would have assurances of being able to hold on to certain players. And um, you know, does he like? Don't forget, they do have the Japanese international striker to come in. He's obviously arrived in the UK. He's going to have to quarantine. But um, so they have signed signed players and. Um, okay. Yeah. I, I look. I think that's that's just where Scottish football is at. That Celtic and Rangers are, are obviously the two giants of Scottish football, but the Premier League is just in a different level at the moment in terms of the the quality, but the money. I mean, yeah. All the money is in the Premier League. Even I mean, we'll talk about it later when we're talking about transfers. But the, even the top leagues in Europe, they can't compete anymore with the Premier League. Yeah, in fairness, uh, Leicester could sign Edward, keep him on the bench, and he could just be a bit part player for them over the next three years, and he would still earn three, four times as much as he's going to earn at Celtic. And Celtic could do with the, the cash for that as well.